What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw a wave. Now this video is inspiration from the most famous Japanese painting, The Great Wave of Kanagawa by Katsushika Hokusai. And the reason I brought that up is because I'll be using the organic shapes of that painting for this video. Except when you look at the painting, there's a boat in there. We won't be drawing the boat. Same with the sky. But mainly we'll just focus on the wave. Anything extra I'll probably throw in for like a few seconds and then, you know, you can do whatever. So that's what's going to happen in today's video. So now let me run down the supplies you're going to need. So for this video, instead of using my usual Copic markers for this video, I'm actually going to be using some of my Ahuhu markers. You know, give them a little spotlight once in a while. But one of these markers is an off-brand marker. So it's uh, one of those cheap touch markers. I'm using 183. And it's a, a Dark Eagle marker, one of the cheap brands I found on Amazon. But brands like this you can only get in sets so if you are able to find a marker like this individually then that would that could also work so i'll be using that and then the ahuhu markers i'm using in today's video are pb1 peanut butter one i like to say that but it really stands for purple blue uh, pb1 2 and 6 are the ahuhu markers i'm going to be using and then i'm also going to be using a posca pen i'm going to be using the white one and then a little bit of my Prismacolor white colored pencil, which I often use in videos, if you know what I do on my channel. But that's what you're gonna need for this video, and then I'm doing all this on Canson Bristol paper. I'm using the seven by 10 paper pad, or notepad, or whatever. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that I will be using my Sharpie markers today. I'm using my, uh, my retractable Sharpie. And then I'm going to be using Big Fat Sharpie. When I get to that portion of the video, I'll tell you what that's for. Because I don't want to ruin the surprise just yet. But anyway, now that we got that covered, let's go. So what we're going to do first, before we get to coloring the waves, we're actually going to start by sketching the waves. And it's really a no-brainer because water doesn't have a definite shape. So what I'm going to do to make this wave is I'm going to make two parallel lines. But they're going to be C-shaped. Because, um... These are organic shapes. So that's gonna be the shape of one wave. So one C shape will be big, one will be small. And I know I said they're supposed to be parallel, but we're gonna kind of break away from that for a second. So I'm gonna take the little I'm going to take the little C over here. I'm going to kind of expound on that line. Make sure it goes all the way out here. This one we actually won't be doing that with. So for the composition of this drawing, I'm actually going to make like another small wave over here. So that'll be another piece of water, I guess I should say. Now this same concept that we did with these two letter C's, we're gonna make another one but smaller. So in other words, if you're doing this digitally, we're gonna duplicate these two lines and make them smaller. And remember this line will come out. Okay, and now on the other side of these two lines, that's where we'll, that's where we'll begin to make the shape of the wave. I mean, this C shape kind of does look like a wave, but, but I'm going to create a different shape that'll make it look more like a wave. So I'm going to come back here and make a slope that goes up. Then it's going to come back down because now up here we're at the crest of the wave. like that and then once we get to a point where we can stop at we're gonna come back and loop so it touches one of these letter C shapes but actually we can make it like this now as you can see I gave the wave a little bit more depth 
So what I'm gonna establish right now at this point in the video, I'm gonna make this portion here. That's gonna be where most of the darker blues are. Now you don't have to shade it like I did with the pencil because we'll be erasing this later. But just so we have a clear understanding of where the shades are gonna go. So this portion of the wave will be lighter than this portion of the wave. And the same goes for this side. So let me go ahead and draw that in right quick. Same deal, just smaller. So what I'm gonna do instead, if you're not happy with the spacing or the actual organic shapes, you can always alter it because right now we're in the sketching phase. So any trial and error that you do, you can always fix at this stage because at the final stage, there's really no going back if you're doing this traditionally. So I'm gonna make that wave come out a little bit more. Yeah, because I felt like those waves were kind of spaced too close together. And now I'll sketch that in to establish where the shades are going to go, making that a little bit easier. And then make that line come out some more. And then make that line come out some more. And like I said, anything else you want to fix, you better do it now or forever hold your peace. Okay? So now I got to a point where I'm good, pretty much. So now I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser and I'm gonna erase the lines to an extent where I can still see them, but so they're barely, barely visible. Hopefully you don't see the other wave that I erase. But yeah, you get the understanding. So now we're at the point where we can begin coloring. So I'm gonna take my base color, which is this cheap Dark Eagle marker. It's number 183. Again, this is a cheap marker that I hope you can find individually, but again, you don't have to. But like Hobby Lobby, I think, sells markers like these individually, like cheap touch twin markers with numbers on them. The color is phalo blue, if I'm pronouncing that right. But we're gonna use this as a base color. And keep in mind, what I'm doing here is making the lines uh, streaky because let's say you're Googling an image of water, you might see streaks in the water. But as I make these streaks on this paper, I'm kind of capturing the movement of the water because like I said, it doesn't have a definite shape because it's always moving. Especially since this is a wave. So it's you know kind of vital to capture that kind of movement. I'm gonna do that with the inside of the wave. See how I'm following the shape of the C shape that we made earlier? That's what we gotta do. And then we can kind of extend those lines out just so they hit close to the edge of the page. Or that's something I want to do, that's my preference. But again, so they follow those same guidelines that I um, think I can't erase because I applied marker on top of it already. Okay, now on the other parts of the wave, what I'm gonna do with the marker now is uh, make like a circular motion just to help separate that out so I know what portion of the waves to shade and which ones not to. Because I think at this point, the guidelines are now not visible. Or if not that, they're kind of hard to see. And another way you can do this is that you can layer on top of layers so that way this, the ink that this marker lays down is like, I'd say more saturated or more ink or more solidified. However you're gonna do it, just so 
you can help separate it out from those streaky lines. It's probably easy to tell if you do it just once, but you know, do what you have to do. Okay, so we're good for adding the base color. So now what I'm gonna do is, instead of working from light to dark like I usually do, I'm actually gonna take my darkest marker, which is Peanut Butter 6, PB6. Again, that's purple, blue, and a hoo-hoo. So I'm gonna apply the darkest shades to the wave. You can see that's a very dark blue. Well, dark in comparison with the base color blue. So I'm just gonna apply that. I'm actually gonna create sort of a cast shadow. Like see this movement of water here? I'm gonna create a cast shadow behind it so that it's on this wave. And I can do that over here as well. And then I'm also going to apply some shading right underneath the crest of the wave because once we add the white paint pen, it'll really make sense why we're adding shade there. So again, you can also layer in this area too, just so you can get a very, very dark blue. It might be difficult to blend later, so just comp contemplate that. And then you can apply like a lot of ink there. Like say I'm adding this to a big area here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue onto the wave I would say that's in the foreground. because it's the wave that's coming closer to us, so that's why I say it's the foreground. And then you see how I add a few accents to this wave using this color? You can also do that, because when we apply our next color, we can really blend those out. But if you want the lines to be solid and sharp, that's still fine too, because after we add all the other colors to help blend these other lines out, we can still add this marker on top to like accent it in a way. Or to keep these lines sharp, I, I would say. So will just add like accents to the wave right here. And I think we're good at this step. Okay, so let me grab my mid-tone, uh, which is peanut butter number two. This is a uh, brilliant blue. Cause you see how it's a uh, more saturated than this than the last blue that we pulled out it is more saturated but it, it goes together and it helps blend so that's why I picked this color for this video And then I'm gonna apply lots of this mid-tone over here because again, this area is a cast shadow. And then up here as well. I think I already did it, but let me do it again. Okay. 
All right, now that I'm done applying that, I can go ahead with my peanut butter one. And I'm not gonna color over the entire thing because this is a light color, but it's not the base color that I use. So I'm just gonna uh, expound on the blending. Okay, now I'm done applying the peanut butter one. I'm going to go back with my base color and blend everything back together. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're about finished adding shades to the waves. So now it's kind of looking a little bare because the outer parts of these waves are super plain. There's no shading added onto them just yet. So this will be a little bit difficult, just a little heads up, because this portion may seem a little bit dry after adding the shades and everything to every other part of the drawing. So this will be a little bit difficult, but I am going to use my mid-tone to add some shading to the waves. My mid-tone is peanut butter one. And if you need to, you can add peanut butter too. But if you're adding shading to this, do not use peanut butter six because that's your darkest color. And again, we don't want to mix that up with the shading we applied to the inside of the waves. So that's why I use PB1 and PB2, but don't go any darker than PB2 because, you know. So I'm going to quickly do that in time lapse and then we can proceed to the next step. Okay, so now we're at this point in the video where we can add a background because after then we'll be applying the white paint pen and applying that on top of a white background, that won't do. So that's why I'm going to bring in my big fat Sharpie and my other Sharpie so we can begin to solidify these lines. So I'm going to use my retractable Sharpie and just go around the shape of the wave. make that black so we can give this entire drawing a black background and if we give it a black background we can definitely see the white paint pen after we apply it okay and then we can use our big fat sharpie and color in everything else <coughs> now it stinks in here but anyway, we got the black background. So next thing we're gonna do is our apply our white paint pen. But before we do, we're gonna give that a little shake. So first let's apply some white paint pen to this layer of water. So again, water has a definite shape. So when you apply the white paint pen, there's no definite shape either. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make some scribbles along the edges of what we drew. And if you want, you can just like do a couple dabs just to give a sensation of water. And then here. And then when we come up to the wave, we can pretty much do the same thing. Just do some scribbles. And then if your paint does seem transparent, you may have to let it dry and then go over in another coat, which is kind of what I am doing. Just, you know, touch up the edges with a couple dabs because there could be drops of water falling from the crest of the wave, which you can definitely see. Just apply the white, add some dabs here and there. And if you got a different size nib, 
pasta pan, I guess you should say. You can definitely add smaller spots or thinner spots, however you're going to say it. But I got a felt tip, so I got to stick with what I got. And really, the drops of water falling from the crest, they don't exactly have to be at the crest or falling off of it. It can just be literally anywhere. Because, keep in mind, this is water. Again, it doesn't have a definite shape. So, if there is like a lot of water, considering how big a wave is, drops of water could be everywhere. So, that's what I'm actually going to do. This drops of water everywhere. I'm going to simulate that with some white dots. Okay. Now, before we end the video, there's one more thing we got to do. So I'm going to take my white colored pencil or if you have a gel pen, you can also you can also use that. But what I'm going to do is add some shine to the movement of the waves because again that's the shading portion or supposedly the shading portion so I'm gonna add some white color pencil to help highlight that some of the darkest parts that we use to simulate the movement of the waves we can highlight those with the white colored pencil So I accidentally did this off camera, but I applied more shading along the wave just to help give it some contrast because earlier it was kind of clashing with the color of the back of this wave. So let's compare this to Hokusai's painting. So here we got the main wave, that's what I did, and I also included like a foreground wave. I want to call it a foreground wave. But before making this video, I honestly thought there was a second wave in the painting. But at the same time, I also thought that I should put this wave in this video just to help fill that negative space because I wasn't gonna make this one super big like it is in the painting. Because my ultimate goal wasn't to make it exactly how the painting is, but get inspiration off it. But if you take a look at the foreground wave, there's no boat or canoe or such. There's no canoes at all in my drawing, but there's two in Hokusai's painting. But yeah, with that being said, that's how you draw a wave using markers, colored pencils, and a paint pen. But if you do want to do this with Copic markers, I will put a list of equivalent Copic colors somewhere on the screen so that way you can do this with Copic markers. But with that being said, that's it. If you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.